Hi everyone, it's Robin. I'm currently working on a mini album and I thought, that, okay, I'm not going to do a full step-by-step -step on the assembly and construction of a mini album. I know I've had several requests to do that, um, but I, I did think that I, it would be a good op, uh, opportunity to uh, perhaps go over some of the basics uh, for those of you that are newer. Uh, the first thing in determining um, it, the first thing is to determine what type of a mini album you're going to have. Is it going to be something that you die cut with chipboard? Is it going to be a pre-purchased one? Is it going to be a paper bag one? Uh, and if so, what size paper bag? These are the actual, uh, actually the jumbo ones. They measure uh, about six and one eighth inches by twelve and a half inches right out of the package. So there are, you know, this would be a, a pretty big one. Uh, but then they go all the way down to just really small ones. You can get at Michael's and things. Uh, but, okay, so if you use a paper bag album, I'll come back to that because this is actually the type of mini album I'm constructing at the moment. The other option is to purchase uh, 12 by 12 sheets of chipboard. I know you can get them smaller. Uh, what I actually buy um, is the... Uh, 12 by 12 chipboard. It comes 25 in a pack. I got it from Scrapbooking Alley. Uh, it says Ritz Camera there on the label. I think they're one and the same. They're kind of sister companies, or, or you know, I think uh, Ritz Camera is actually the parent company. I'm not sure. I know they are interrelated though. So I do purchase mine there. I think uh, for 25 sheets, I think it's like 8.99. I'm not sure. For, so for those of you in the states, uh, it's a really good option for for getting medium weight chipboard. Okay, and then you can cut it a couple different ways. Like I said, if you're going to die cut it, then obviously you would just trim it to, uh, you can even hand, uh, scissor, you know, cut it with scissors. It doesn't matter if it's a straight line, uh, if you're going to run it through your die, uh, your die cutting machine. But if you're cutting it like by hand and you want six by six pages, what I like to do is I use my grid, on my grid mat, it's a, it's a self-healing mat. I will line up one edge along the one inch line and then I will line up along the half inch line at the bottom so I can still see the numbers. I know this is too small, you know, the numbers are too small for you to see. But then I use my metal edge ruler. You have to have a metal edge ruler. It doesn't have to be full metal, but it does have to have a metal edge to, to work. And then so I'm, I've gone up half an inch here, which means if I want a six by six album, I'm going to cut this at six and a half inches and so you see that by doing that I can line it up with this line and with this line if I had it all the way in the corner here I wouldn't be able to see what was going on so that's why I like to line it up at one inch and then um, at the the half inch going up this way so uh, lining it up six inches six and a half inches um, right here. Then you can use your craft knife and just give it a couple straight passes keeping your fingers clear. Speaking from experience, I was like uh, cutting like this one day and somehow it slipped and I really cut my finger bad. So uh, I just want to give you a word of caution that way. And then of course, you know, when it's 6 by 12 then you would flip it and then you would do it again. So you'd get four pages out of a 12 by 12 obviously. Okay, so that's um, one option. You can also use like a strong cutter. I know the Carl cutters are fantastic. There are a lot of really, really great cutters out there. I, I happen to have a guillotine cutter and this is what I've been using lately. Um, and then I'll just kind of set it in there. I'm not going to cut this because I don't need it cut, but um, then just give it a quick downward motion. Uh, you got to kind of do it fast and it should cut it uh, with one swipe as long as you're, you know, depending on the age of your blade. Um, if you're doing a paper bag album, which that's, like I said, what I'm working on right now, the very first thing I do when I take it out of the package, I determine how long I want my album to be. Uh, what your pages are going to do, you're going to, this is the flap side, and you're going to fold this over when you're putting it together. Of course, there's many techniques, but this is a technique that I use. So basically when you're measuring how long you want it, you need to have it with the flap folded over or measure how long this is and then add. So, but I just like to do this and then determine how, how long I want it to be 
and I think I've cut mine. I have one that I'm working on here, and I cut it at seven and a half, seven and a half inches. So it's going to be seven and a half by six and an eighth. Um, so then I will take my trimmer and I'll cut all the pages, um, you know, to that length. I'll give it a nice clean edge right there. Then what I'll do is I will open up the flap here. But this is optional. You don't need to do this. Uh, and then I will just add adhesive here and then along the side here. Uh, the whole length of it, and then also you'll want to add adhesive here. I usually wait until after I, I ink or paint around the edges, just because it, it, um, it, it's able to get under the, the flaps a little bit, and it just gives you a nicer look. So once I have it inked or painted around the edges, I'll, I'll add adhesive right here. And then what I do, I will uh, take my bone folder, fold it over, and just make those score lines nice and crisp, and I'll actually just kind of brush it along there to take out some of the, the wrinkles that are in the bag. Um, and then, okay, so a basic six-page mini album that you would use, like in a swap. Uh, it doesn't have to be a swap, obviously. And you can add as many pages as you'd like. Uh, I'll just take, okay, so I have it folded over with the flap facing me. I'll take another bag that I've already cut and inked and do the same. And then what you're going to do is doing back to back so it actually looks like this. And then you're going to add adhesive all along here. And then carefully, it's important to line them up. Along, I line them up along what will, what will be the spine that way. And then I take right here and I line up. Of course, this is all closed up with the, you know, the adhesive. So you won't have four sections you're seeing here. You'll just have two. You just kind of line those up to make sure that it's lined up properly. And then I burnish it again to um, add my adhesive. I do, I use this, uh, my tape gun for uh, my ATG pages, uh, except for my binding. And I do have a binding technique tutorial, a couple of them in fact, uh, for uh, how to bind them. But um, just add adhesive all along the edge. And then I do uh, this either a grid or an X, depending. I don't know. Okay, so then you can do a couple sets of these. If you're doing a six page mini, uh, obviously that would be three different sets of these. Um, and here's some I have finished. I'm actually doing four sets because I want to have a good size album for my mom. And I've just inked, I painted this with my gold Adirondack dabber. And you can see this is all adhe uh, adhered here. So this is what it'll end up looking like. So this would be the second stage that you would do. Okay, there's four sets here. Okay, so now I need to get my covers. So what I have done is I like to give myself a little bit of extra room uh, on the length so that my tags have room to, you know, I can have something sticking out without it being at the edge of my mini. This is what I mean. Okay, so I'll measure this and then I'll give myself at least a half an inch longer, you know, lengthwise or yeah, height-wise. And then um, you can see I have a good inch and a half, two inches here, so where I can have tags and I can have like uh, prima flowers sticking out right here without it hanging over the edge of my mini, which that's cute too, but um, it's just a matter of preference. So for this one for my mom, I thought I would have it self-contained that way. So it's not really even a mini, it's kind of a big, big mini <laughs> because it's going to measure, um, finished, it's going to measure six and seven eighths by 10 or by 9 so 9 and 1 8 so it is going to be a good size book but um you know that's that's what I wanted for her and that's the fun about making something you customize it the way you want this would be a time after you cut your chipboard covers obviously you'll need two one for the front and one for the back um, and then of course I use a piece of chipboard for the spine um, but I wait until I get the mini all done so that I know how high to make that and then um, put ink around the edges um, it's a good time to do that. And then the next thing is just determining the paper. Uh, what, what do you want for the cover? And this is what I've, I'm running out of time here, but this is what I've chosen for the cover. So just kind of give you a little sneak peek of what I'm working on here. Um, and then you will adhere this with a strong, you know, good adhesive right here. And so this would be the front. And then you're going to adhere your paper bag on it this way. Uh, that'll be in another video though. 
um, that I'm going to do that because like I said I am running out of time but then you would do the same for the back cover so I hope that helps somebody and I'll be back with another video um, in the next week I'm not sure exactly how many days so uh, anyway thanks for watching have a great evening bye bye